All right, we're back. Live Nation starts our calls of the day today. Uh, price target to 137 at JPM. 52 week high yesterday. Josh Brown owns it. What's your take? Well, my take is I sold half my position in June, so today I feel like a schmuck on wheels. The stock has done nothing but go up since then. And I think uh, the analyst at JP Morgan is going to be right. Here's what's changed about the story and why the stock is moving higher, despite the fact that they're tussling with the Justice Department yet again. They're talking about their cash flow per fan at the, uh, at the venues that they themselves own or own and operate or, or just operate being significantly higher than just where there's ticket sales. And this is going to be the future of the business. They call it Venue Nation, and J.P. Morgan estimates it's a $350 million opportunity. They are going to be building their own situation in a lot of different places and throwing events, and they make a lot more money when they do that than when they just partner with a venue. And a really great example of um, the power of this is right near where I live, five minutes from my house, Jones Beach Amphitheater, which they just did a complete renovation of um, top to bottom. It's incredible. And I could tell they're making a lot more money because I know I'm spending more when I go there. So this is a really great growth story. Not a lot of people know what's happening here. And uh, no one is stopping attending uh, concerts. Uh, that we thought that maybe would run its course in 2023. Mm -hmm. it's, it just isn't. So uh, I really like the stock, and I'm sticking with what I have left. Verizon was cut to sector weight, Jenny, at yeah, Key Bank like, today. This is like the opposite of a really great growth story. <laughs> so, um, so they announced earnings last week, and they were kind of fine, right? They kind of they guided toward the upper end of the range, but behind that there was a lot of messiness. And so Key Bank's not wrong. And in their downgrade, what they say is there's not enough upside, and I would add for them. There continues to be enough upside for me. This is in our dividend strategy, and I look at it as kind of a bond equivalent. So even after their kind of messy backstory to their earnings, even after their guide, even after this downgrade, here's the bottom line. It's trading at nine times earnings as a 6% dividend yield. Earnings are going to grow in the 3 to 4% range for the next several years. So I look at that, and I'm like, all right, I'm putting 6% dividend yield in my pocket. If the share price grows in line with earnings, forget about multiple expansion, you get another 3 to 4%. That's a 9 to 10% annualized return for a dividend income strategy. That's awfully I nice. i got to throw a flag. The stock's Brilliant. trading at the same price it was trading in 1998. Okay, I hate this and, argument. Okay, fine, but it's, it's a legitimate argument. And I looked at what the CEO has been paying himself. It's like, where are the activists? This stock literally fine. is like watching paint dry. That's for true. A dec for literally decades, okay, and I don't understand what's thing, wrong like, with it. I didn't own it back in 1980. I feel whatever. you. I feel like, you. That you oh, this, there's always a starting point, and and this is where you know you and I conflict a lot. Where you're like, hey, but if you look at 10 years, or actually where I really Wait, got so into what's going to change though relative to the last 25 years? It's That's my stable. question. 25 years, there's so much disruption in that space, and now it's down to three players. It's like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile. They're all kind of doing their thing. T-Mobile, it doesn't pay out the huge dividends, so they have better earnings growth than the other two. But you get like really kind of stable solid predictable earnings growth but I got into it with Weiss the other day when when he said the same thing he's like okay but if you look back 20 years and I'm like okay but what's your holding period well, here's the my point though here's the point though there's a reason okay this versus T-Mobile it's no contest T-Mobile was the better bet correct but I what's run a dividend income strategy what's going to change here to make the dividend not be six percent but three percent because the share price doubles I don't need that okay and they grow the dividend in so line, buy a bond so I can hold why would I buy a bond? There's no upside. What am I, okay, six percent in a stock price that oh can't go up. Let's dig down on that. If I buy a Verizon bond, I'm probably mm -hmm. getting a five percent yield, right? Don't buy and, a Verizon bond. Okay, but fine. Buy any old corporate bond and go out what five to eight years. You're probably getting for decent for decent corporate credit. You're probably getting five five and a half percent, and you're paying ordinary income tax, so you're paying call it thirty eight percent. Here you get six percent in your pocket. That, oh, by the way. And that 5% yield that you've locked in on the bond never grows. That's all you get. So if there's inflation, you get nothing more. On this, also, you get Also, a dividend. can't drop 20%. It doesn't leave matter. That part if out. you have a long time frame, you just wait it out. This, you get a dividend at 6% that grows, that keeps up with inflation, plus a little bit of growth on top of that, plus a better tax rate. Like, of course I want this. And all you need to do is, like, shut your eyes, grit your teeth, and bear it in terrible times. But, by the way, go back to 2020 when everything else was terrible. Verizon and AT&T held up pretty well. All right.